today we will have discussion on newton's laws of motions we are having with us mr ajay sharma discussion about newton's first law of motion the contents of newton's first law of motion 1686 existed earlier in the scientific literature the first part of the first law of motion was given by aristotle 350 bc and the second part by galileo 1613 newton gave a precise statement of the first law of motion combining two but newton never mentioned the names and contributions of aristotle and galileo so newton is simply the editor and propagator of the ideas of aristotle and galileo in his first law of motion basis of discussion the paper has been presented at international conferences paper in press in scopus indexed journal the discussion will appear on www.newton99.com and youtube channels first of all let us know if you have any different ideas than the prevalent theories about the study of the motion of bodies yes in the 21st century the motion of bodies needs to be studied in slightly different ways than the existing methodology i mean to say that the motion of bodies be studied separately for terrestrial systems and realistic systems and ideal systems the mathematical equations must be purposely used further scientific meaning between motion and velocity needs to be clarified number 1 terrestrial or realistic or practical systems in such systems the resistive forces frictional force gravitational force atmospheric force are present these are the system we encounter in daily life aristotle's assertion is meant for such systems number 2 ideal systems in such systems in which the resistive forces are mentioned as mentioned above are completely absent in actual practice these are imaginary systems as these are known existence on the earth galileo described the motion of bodies mainly in ideal system in 1613 newton first law of motion is another form of galileo's perceptions in definite and precise form so it is also primarily meant for the ideal systems what is the theme of this discussion do you mean newton's first law of motion is not his original work yes newton is not innovator of the first law of motion the contents of the first law of motion existed in literature before newton newton is editor or propagator of the first law of motion as concepts were earlier given by aristotle 350 bc and galileo 1613 now newton precisely and elegantly edited the above existing contributions without acknowledging galileo and aristotle in the principia first part of the newton's first law of motion about the state of rest it was given by aristotle in 350 bc that is 2036 years before newton's principia galileo after careful observations and deep ponderings also arrived at the same conclusion in 1613 hence vindicated the aristotle's assertion the second part of newton's first law of motion is about state of uniform motion which is originated by galileo in 1613 that is 73 years before newton's principia Newton picked up the existing works from the literature what did not mention these works have been earlier published by Aristotle and Galileo what is Aristotle's assertion about the motion of bodies given in 350 BC Aristotle 350 BC stated continuous force ex- continual external force is required to set and keep body in motion so aristotle's assertion has two parts first part is that the state of rest is natural state of the body the second part is that the body only moves due to applications of external force 
This perception is supported by some physical examples. For example, a gunny bag remains lying on the ground or road or at any other place from morning to evening. It does not move by itself. It only moves if somebody pushes it or pulls it. It was taught for 2000 years as supported by some physical examples. What abundant now as it is found no, it is found incorrect in some observations. Is Aristotle's assertion meant for realistic system or ideal systems? Can it be understood with the mathematical equation? It is useful for terrestrial or realistic systems when resistive forces or dissipative forces, frictional force, atmospheric force, gravitational force, etc. are present. The reason is that body remains in its natural state of rest and moves when external force is applied to overcome such resistive forces. When externally applied force overcomes the resistive forces, the body moves due to effect of resultant or impressed force, which is difference between the externally applied force and the resistive forces. Mathematically, resultant force or impressed force, net force, is equal to external force minus resistive force, it is equation 1. Both Galileo and Newton realized the importance of resistive forces, what did not explain the same in form of equation due to conceptual limitations in very early days of physics. Now, firstly, if external force is applied in an adequate amount, then resultant force which causes motion is more than resistive forces. In this case, the body moves. Secondly, if external force is applied on body and body moves in realistic system, what after it force is discontinued, for example, stone is thrown in air then magnitude of resistive forces continuously increases with time then resultant force becomes zero hence body stops thirdly if a in a special or imaginative case if resistive forces are zero then the body is pushed externally then equation one becomes the resultant force impressed force is equal to external force equation number two so the external force is not dissipated hence resultant force cause of motion remains same as external force is applied in the absence of resistive forces body moves with uniform velocity in a straight line this situation was firstly imagined by galileo in 1613 and then Newton repeated or applied the same in second part of Newton's first law of motion. The further body also remains at state of rest in an ideal system what it can be pushed with an exceptionally small force. Part 2. Galileo's general contemplations about the motion of bodies. Name the documents where Galileo elaborated on both the state of rest and the state of motion of bodies. Galileo wrote letters on sunspots written to illustrious Mark Welser, the Dumbir of Augustwar in 1612, published by Italian Academia de Lincey in 1613. It contains exceptional exceptionally useful statements and explanation about the state of rest and state of motion of bodies. These are based on Galileo's decades old contemplations and ponderings and observations. Galileo's monograph was translated into English by Stillman Drake in book Discoveries and Opinions of Galileo in 1957. Galileo's two prominent statements from letters on sunspots may be quoted as Statement 1. The simple meaning of Statement 1. If the body is placed at rest, it remains at rest. If the body is pushed, then it moves in a straight line with the same 
velocity or uniform velocity the second part is only true for the ideal system now second statement the simple meaning of the second statement the body is an inherent body has an inherent tendency to move with uniform motion even if it is not pushed by external force and no resistive forces obstruct the body thus it is true for an, it is true for an ideal system newton picked up these inferences or maybe extrapolations from the existing literature to form the second part of newton's second law of motion in very precise and elegant language or wordings in the book dialogue concerning two new sciences published in 1638 at page 195 newton state stated that and the simple meaning of the statement is if body is set in motion in an ideal system free from resistive forces then the body moves forever in a straight line how terminology in galileo's time 1564 to 1642 was different from that in the current or present time galileo described the his perceptions when physics was not a subject what it was a part of natural philosophy in galileo's time there were no separate subjects such as mathematics physics astronomy chemistry philosophy etc all subjects were taught under a single heading called natural philosophy newton originated physics separating it from natural philosophy when he wrote principia in 1686 that is 44 years after galileo's death in the principia newton defined eight terms gave three laws of motion and law of gravitation etc number 2 the velocity which is a significant term now was mathematically defined by j jennings in 1721 in the book miscellanea as velocity is equal to distance traveled divided by time number 3 the in galileo's time friction was a general term the laws of friction were defined 57 years after death of galileo by amontonus in 1699 thus in galileo's time that scientific terminology and phraseology was bare minimum part 3 of the discussion is about the state of rest how did galileo vindicate or arrive at a conclusions about aristotle's assertion after 1916 three years as aristotle's assertion has two parts Galileo vindicated both the parts. Number one, in the letters on sunspots, on page hundred thirteen, statement one, Galileo stated that body conserves the state of rest. That is, body remains in natural state of rest. It is first part of Aristotle's assertion. Further, in statement one, Galileo stated that the body has to be pushed to set it in motion. he has said if placed in some movement thus the body changes its state when external force is applied it is nothing what second part of galileo's uh, second part of aristotle's assertion so both part of aristotle's assertion as authenticated by galileo in 1613 that is about 1963 years after given by aristotle how did newton repeat aristotle's assertion in the first part of the first law of motion the first part of newton's first law of motion 1686 states every body perseveres in its state of rest unless it is compelled to change that state by forces impressed thereon in simple words this part means body remains in state of rest the body moves when external force acts on it it may be understood in two parts first part the body remains in state of rest 
it implies that state of rest is natural state of body it is first part of aristotle assertion number 2 the body moves from state of rest when impressed force or resultant force are applied acts on the body resultant force is net effect of external force and resistive forces so this part is first law this part of the first law of motion is nothing what aristotle's assertion given about 350 bc then newton in 1686 picked it picked it up from the existing literature and recoded the same as first part of newton's first law of motion newton used aristotle's assertion in a more precise compact and scientific phraseology what newton never mentioned that the basis of first part of principia's first law of motion existed earlier and given by aristotle about 2063 years before part 4 of the discussion about the state of motion now explain what are galileo's doctrines on the state of uniform motion of bodies how did galileo envision the state of uniform motion of the body galileo pondered over the observations for decades to arrive at conclusions about the motion of body first part perception of intrinsic horizontal motion practically galileo drew an analogy between naturally falling bodies revolving planets and the horizontal motion of bodies in very early days of physics galileo concluded that bodies naturally fall without any apparent external force planets also revolve around the sun without any apparent external force it must be noted that in galileo's time the law of gravitation was not discovered the law of gravitation was discovered by newton in the principia 1686 that is 44 years after death of galileo so galileo inferred the same the state of similar motion is true for horizontal motion as well thus he concluded that bodies too have an inherent tendency to move in horizontal motion without external force like the vertical motion of the bodies and motion of the planets what also added that bodies stop due to some obstacle or resistive forces in the horizontal motion number 2 galileo's perception is meant for ideal system if the body is placed at the rest in an ideal system it remains at rest that is in natural state what body may move with exceptionally small force in an ideal force when body is set in motion in an ideal system then resistive force is equal to zero hence equation 1 becomes resultant force is equal to externally applied force this is equation 2 if just pushed with exceptionally small force or suitable force the body maintains remains velocity u or capital u that is 1 meter per second or 10 meter per second or different in an ideal system as the external force is not dissipated and body moves with uniform velocity in a straight line as it is unable to change the magnitude and direction of movement due to absence of resistive forces thus body moves with uniform velocity in an ideal system only now let us come to the real point what is the second part of newton's first law of motion how did newton repeat or recode it from the existing literature that is work of galileo 1613 the second part of newton's first law of motion is every body perseveres in its state of uniform motion in a right line unless it is compelled to change that state by forces impressed thereon in simple words this part means everybody continues in state of uniform motion 
and this state is only changed when external force acts on the body. The second part of Newton's law may be understood in two parts. First part, every body remains in state of uniform motion in a straight line. Every body keeps on moving in a straight line with constant velocity if once pushed. It is evident from question 5 that Galileo's statement 1, statement 2, etc. Number 2. The state of uniform motion is changed if impressed forces thereon. The impressed forces mean resultant force that is net effect of external force and resistive forces or Galileo has used the word some obstacle. Galileo has stated that uniform motion is changed when body is impeded by some obstacle. So the second part of Newton's first law of motion was visualized by, visualized by Galileo as early as 73 years before. What Newton did not mention the name of Galileo at all who elaborated the second part of the law earlier. So you mean to say that Newton has recorded, restated or re-edited the first law of motion from the existing works of Aristotle and Galileo. Did Newton acknowledge the names of Aristotle and Galileo in his book Principia? Yes, Newton is the editor and preacher of Aristotle's and Galileo's observations and perceptions. Newton elaborated textual versions of Galileo's perception in 1686 in precise and graceful statement about the first law of motion. In brief, Newton is editor and propagator of doctrines of Aristotle and Galileo. Newton combined the laws of Aristotle and Galileo in a single precise statement known as first law of motion in the Principia published in 1686. Newton did not acknowledge the work of Aristotle and Galileo. However, Newton acknowledged the work of many other scientists, including even the name of books, for example, Husen's book, Holorosium Oxidatrium. Interestingly, the first edition of the Principia, Newton gave some references mentioning Robert Hooke regarding the inverse square law of gravitation. Robert Hooke died in 1703 and the second edition of Principia was published after 10 years that is in 1713. Newton removed all the references to Robert Hooke as Hooke was claiming that he has also contributed to the discovery of the law of gravitation published in the Principia. Newton may have not given names of Aristotle and Galileo regarding first law of motion in the past for any reason. What errors may be connected, corrected at any time due to giving due credit to genuine innovators. Aristotle and Galileo would both be Aristotle and Galileo would be both moral and scientific. How did Descartes' book, Principles of Philosophy, 1644, influence Newton's laws of motion in the Principia, 1686? Descartes wrote a book, Principles of Philosophy, in 1644. In the book, Descartes has given three laws of nature, which are different from Newton's laws of motion. Scientists widely believe that Newton might have given three laws of motion in 1686 as Jacarte has given three laws of nature in 1644. Thank you.